lifetime, visit a-h.law. Jay Sekulow is busy defending President Trump. Uh, this is from the floor of the United States Senate on Saturday. First of all, let me be clear. Disagreeing with the president's decision on foreign policy matters or whose advice he's going to take is in no way an impeachable offense. And yet, folks, that constitutes the entirety of the first article brought by House managers against President Trump abuse of power. Jay Sekulow Live, weeknights at 6, right before Larry Elder at 7, on AM 1250, The Answer. It ain't over yet. Uh, maybe by the time we're off the air tonight, we'll know when the impeachment follies will be over. But uh, Lisa Murkowski, the sort of Republican senator from Alaska, said she's not voting for witnesses. And that was the end of the game for the Democrats. Uh, it could be over late tonight or we could actually, believe it or not, still be talking about this in the next week. We're not going to talk about it here, though, unless there's something new. And by the way, it is Friday and that means it's time for this. And now, it's time for The Jerk of the Week, starring John Steigerwald. Yeah, we could have put the names of 50 Democrats, 50 media people in a hat and picked one, and it would have worked, but that's no fun. So here you go. This was from last weekend. Don Lemon, the anchor on CNN with Rick Wilson, a never-Trumper, and somebody named Wajahat Ali. Anyway, you can hear uh, Lemon laughing while the other two go off, not just on Donald Trump, but on all the stupid boomer rubes with no teeth who like him. And Lemon actually had the wet tears away from his eyes with his little hanky. And it, obviously it's false. And look, he also knows deep in his heart that Donald Trump couldn't find Ukraine on a map if you had the letter U and a picture of an actual physical crane next to it. He knows that this is, you know, an, an administration defined by ignorance of the world. And so that's partly him playing to their base and playing to their audience, uh, you know, the, the, the credulous boomer rube demo that backs Donald Trump. Um, that, that wants to think that, that, that Donald Trump's a smart one and they're, oh, y'all, y'all, y'all elitists are dumb. <laughs> you, you elitists with your geography and your maps and your spelling, even though my path and you're reading. <laughs> yeah, you're reading, you know, your geography, knowing other countries, sipping your latte. <laughs> All those lines on the map. <laughs> <laughs> Only them elitists know where Ukraine is. <laughs> sorry, I apologize. But by, but by the way, oh my God! <laughs> but, but you know what? But, but it was Rick's fault. I blame Rick. Oh but, you know, but, but in all honesty, but all, blame you know what Rick. NPR should Why do? not? Sorry, hold on. You, wait, wait, can wait, I tell wait, you what? A second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> that was good. Sorry, Rick. You, that you, was a good one. I needed that. Yeah, so he took a lot of heat on social media for that. Uh, very little criticism, by the way, from the news media, but. Apology. And one final note that I have for you, because this is personally important to me to address this, okay? Anyone, ask anyone who knows me, they'll tell you. I don't believe in belittling people, belittling anyone for who they are, for what they believe, or where they're from. During an interview on Saturday night, one of my guests said something that made me laugh. And while in the moment I found that joke humorous, and I didn't catch everything that was said. Just to make this perfectly clear, I was laughing at the joke and not at any group of people. Yeah, right. He's terribly sorry. Just as sorry as we are to award Don Lemon the Windows R Us Jerk of the Week. The Jerk of the Week is brought to you by Windows R Us, Pittsburgh's premier exterior replacement company. Expert repair and replacement for windows, roofs, siding, doors, gutters, and downspouts. Why pay double? Visit WindowsRUsPittsburgh.com. Well, it is Super Bowl weekend. The Super Bowl's on Sunday, and everybody's focused on the ads during the Super Bowl. Uh, one ad that didn't make it was a pro-life ad. And for some reason, uh, Fox didn't think it was uh, worthy of being on the Super Bowl. We're going to talk to the woman who heads up the group that was trying to get the ad placed during the Super Bowl and couldn't get it done. We'll do that when we come back. Stick around. They blew
blow into town with the wind, rain, and hail. And out of town storm chasers going door to door, often posing as a local company, offering a quick fix to desperate homeowners. If you've had damage to your roof, windows, siding, or gutters and downspouts, you may be eligible to get them replaced or repaired free of charge. Just be careful who you call. Visit WindowsRSPittsburgh.com for a free inspection from one of their highly trained appraisers. With over 50 years in home remodeling, Windows R Us is the area's premier exterior replacement company for roofs, siding, gutters and downspouts, doors, and of course windows. If damage isn't your issue and you just want something new, you'll love their no-pressure approach, no hidden fees, and one of the fastest turnaround times in the industry. A company who will never skip town when it comes to honoring their warranty. Visit WindowsRUsPittsburgh.com. Mention Stag for an additional 10% off. Windows R Us, proud sponsor of the Jerk of the Week, heard every Friday on the John Steigerwald Show. WindowsRUsPittsburgh.com. We have a major problem here in Pennsylvania, very much like other addictions plaguing our communities. The threat is unregulated gambling on illegal slot machines, camouflaged as skill games. They're popping up everywhere, at gas pumps, pizza parlors, and your local convenience store. State police describe these places as breeding grounds for loan sharking and money laundering. If you object to your community becoming a mini Las Vegas, make your voice heard. Call one 888 472 4418. Report those places that are enticing our kids into gambling disguised as entertainment. It's an activity that siphons money away from the Pennsylvania Lottery, whose proceeds go to supporting seniors in our state. Please phone now. This is serious. That number again is 1 888 472 4418. Paid for by Pennsylvanians Against Illegal Gambling. Executive Board Member Peter Shelley. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Do you have brain fog and lack of energy during the day? If so, take back your vitality and clarity with all-natural Cola Gel. Newly discovered jellyfish collagen peptides that aids with brain and memory support. Cola Gel is all-natural with no side effects. Edible jellyfish collagen uniquely supplies the body with multiple collagen peptides and naturally occurring minerals that fuels our cellular system with energy-rich compounds. Jellyfish Collagen is a nutritive formula that promotes optimum neurological activity and improves cognitive memory. Receive your first bottle free plus shipping by visiting longevitybynature.biz and enter promo code COLAGEL. That's longevitybynature.biz and enter promo code COLAGEL. K-O-L-L-A-J-E-L-L. Get your first bottle free plus shipping by visiting longevitybynature.biz promo code COLAGEL. Eliminate brain fog and lack of energy with COLAGEL at longevitybynature.biz is. That's longevitybynature.biz. Texting privacy policy and terms and conditions are posted at textrules.us. Texting and rules for recurring automated marketing text messages, message and data rates may apply. Hi, I'm Tom from K11, and I have one question for you. What size socks are you wearing right now? If you're like everyone else I've asked, you simply don't know. How could you? That's because until now, socks were made in one size fits all or just a couple of sizes to fit every size foot. But not at Kane 11. We make our socks in 11 individual sizes from 7 to 17. That's right, 7 to 17. Great looks and colors to fit everyone's lifestyle. From cotton to wool or anything in between, Kane 11 has got the perfect sock for you. Better yarns, better quality, just to better them just like we do. Send them back for a full refund. That's the Kane 11 promise. Once you wear a pair of Kane 11s, I guarantee you'll never go back to wearing socks in multi-size ranges again. Save 20% off your first order when you text SOCKS to 246810. That's text SOCKS to 246810. Text SOCKS to 246810. You're listening to The John Steigerwald Show on AM 1250. The answer. On Monday, there will be as much talk about the uh, about the Super Bowl ads as there will be about the game, maybe more. But uh, here's an ad that you won't see during the Super Bowl because Fox wouldn't run it. The audio is powerful enough, I think. You can uh, get the gist of it without seeing the pictures. The pictures are, are black and white. It's just black and white video with close-ups of the faces of the people you'll be listening to here. Check it out. She looked me in the eye. Can you look me in the eye and tell me that I shouldn't exist? That I should be dead? That I deserve to die that day. Can you look me in the eye and tell me that my very survival was a mistake? Can you look me in the eye and tell me that in my most vulnerable state, I was nothing more than a parasite? 
collection of body parts. Subhuman? Worthless? Yeah, the people you heard there are all uh, all survived abortions, and the organization that wanted to run the ad is called Faces of Choice. Lyric Gillette is the founder and executive director of Faces of Choice. She joins us now. Lyric, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me on, John. And just for a brief bit to clarify, that ad that is going around the media is actually the two-minute ad that was played at the March for Life a bit after President Trump spoke. Okay. Our 30-second ad um, for the Super Bowl doesn't even mention the word abortion. It simply talks about the word choice. And so, really, Fox has denied a very tame, very benign ad. Yeah, that was a two-minute uh, ad that, that, I, that we cut that uh, mm-hmm. segment from. So, and I didn't know, I I figured that the 30-second ad was somewhere in there. But uh, you're saying, is it the same people, but just a shortened version without mentioning the word abortion? It's the same people, and some of the children are featured, and I can actually quote it to you. All it says is, can you look me in the eye? Can you look me in the eye and tell me that I didn't deserve to survive? One thing binds us together, one event we all share, one choice tried to steal our lives, but we survived. We are the faces of choice. I am the face of choice. I am that choice. And that's and, it. And, and I, That's what they got rid of. And I think, uh, you know, having seen the ad that I saw, uh, the one that, uh, that you just heard, um, that's an ad that would have gotten a lot of um, discussion on Monday. And some Absolutely. of it, some of it would have been negative. Some people would have been offended to face the fact that abortion is what it is, but it would have it would have gotten a lot of attention. So um, I know a 30-second ad on this year's Super Bowl telecast costs over $5 million. You had the money for that? We had individuals who were supporting us in the event that we were accepted. So we don't have it in the bank, but we have the individuals who are there saying, if you get this through, it won't be a problem. Oh, okay. So you, you, but you, so you basically, you didn't have the money in your pocket, but you had the money. Uh, it was ready to. We had it. You yes, could, sir. You we had the support. And, and keep in mind, too, that we were initially told that we would get our answer by the second week of October. And so we had all of, you know, everything lined up. And so, you know, talked to the initial sponsors in, in September and we're told that, you know, this is not going to be a problem for raising that because we're going to get our answer in October and it's due by November or excuse me, due by January. So it's just kind of like a, you know, we got this sort of mentality. And so that is a huge part of, of the issue with Fox as well and how they were protracting this. We were, like I said, told we would receive word by October. November rolled around, and, and mind you, we reached out July 29th. That was the initial date that we actually reached out to them with our application. And so they are, are stonewalling from J- July until we reach November. And so November 22nd, um, or November 18th rolls around, it's a Friday. And we're told that the sales department of Fox is very unhappy with the way things are proceeding. Illegal through Fox Sports. And that the vice president of sales through Fox was going to fly from Chicago to New York that day to figure out what's going on. And we were told, I have an email on November 18th, this is not a sellout situation. We're a little bit tight, but it's not a sellout issue that we're coming up against. Just hang tight and we'll have word for you by Monday. So Monday rolls around and we hear absolutely nothing. We find out that evening after the business day is over that the Super Bowl has now declared itself sold out. So we went from July to November, an answer in early October, no word, one stipulation given to us after the other. The bench post is constantly moved for us to hop over. Um, And so my media buyer told me... um, after we heard the entire sellout situation, she sent them an email and said, we believe, I believe that you did this to create a sellout situation. But she told me that every year that she's done this, she's been in the industry for a very long time, spots always open up with the Super Bowl after the sellout has occurred, whether it's somebody drops out because they can't pay or there's a controversy or additional spots are open. So she said, what we need to do is pursue clearance anyway. We need an answer from them. And you know, John, had the Super Bowl ever told us we have an issue with your content? They never did that. They never told us anything. They never had a single negative thing to say about our actual content. They just wouldn't give us an answer. So had they made that statement, had they given us a no, we're adults, we can handle it. They simply would not answer. 
pursue clearance from them or an answer from them. That way, when a spot opens up, if you get clearance, we can step right in. And so we sent them an email immediately after the sellout situation in late November. We did not get a response, um, a solid response from them until December 12th, when the head of the legal department told us, we will get you an answer on clearance very soon. A week later, we get another email saying, guess what, never mind, we've decided that we are not going to clear your ad or give you a decision on your ad unless or until, think about it, from July to November, we've not received an answer, and we're expected to believe that if a spot opens, they're gonna give us an answer in one day. I don't think so. So what happens come January this month, last week, it's announced that more spots are opened up, and so we did not receive any contact from Fox. They did not respond to any of our queries, and the only individual that has received a response was the Washington Times after they harangued them for a couple of days, and Fox's response, which I think must have been written by an intern, essentially said, or actually verbatim said, um, Super Bowl 54 sold out at a record pace, and we were unable to accommodate faces of choice. Uh, well, so we work with them from July to November. Right. It's sold out at a, at a record pace, but you also heard uh, in between that some um, sponsors had dropped out and there were openings, but they never contacted you, right? Never. This is in January. And and like I said, November 18th, four days before they told us and that they were, you know, for the first sellout, we were told by the Fox rep, and I quote, I have the email, this is not a sellout situation. We're not at a sellout situation. There are still spaces. You will get an answer hopefully very soon. We have been told that so often from, I'd say, late September, early October until now December that we will, quote, get an answer very soon, and it never was forthcoming from, from anyone. So, we were simply... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Sure, go, ahead. go ahead. No, no, you go. No, they, they just they just simply stonewalled us the entire time. So, um, so I mean, we may, we may not know which commercials they are, but there will be commercials that will run mm -hmm. in the Super Bowl on Sunday that were added after you were told there were no openings? That's correct. Do you know which ones they are? Do you know which, which companies they are? I do not know that, no, sir. We were told that they were individuals who had been approved as affiliates with the NFL in the past, which, again, of course, those are the people who are going to be given preference when that selection process comes, which is why we had asked way back when for them at least to give us clearance as an organization with Fox. That way we would at least have a fighting chance. I mean, it's obvious that if we're not even cleared, that if spots open up, there's no way we're going to even have a fighting chance at getting any of the spots that open, and that's obvious. And I sent a very strongly worded email to Fox um, on December 9th saying exactly that, that I feel that we've been strung along since October, and the fact that you will not even give us a yes or a no is very clear. And so, you know, it's not, it doesn't escape my notice that these survivors had their voices almost stolen from them in the very beginnings of their lives. And now, as a culture, as a media culture, we are deeming them worthy of being ignored into oblivion yet again. And, you know, that really is the purpose behind this, because every, every great humanitarian effort, every civil rights movement of our era has had the face of a survivor attached to it. You mm -hmm. can look at the civil rights movement with MLK and Rosa Parks, who gave face to the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. You can look at even um, the Holocaust. Ali Wazel gave face to the inhumanity of Auschwitz. So if you are actually having to look a survivor in the face and have them request that you acknowledge their humanity, that has the power to change everything. Oh, and especially with this issue of choice, because if you say that you are pro-choice, and someone survived that choice, then you were telling them that you were against their survival. Yeah, um, and I mean, it's a powerful, powerful ad. Uh, I'm just wondering, it would be interesting to find out if, if there are, if you were selling beer or a, car, <laughs> or a car, would you have gotten the same runaround? Or, you know, do other, are there other sponsors out there who go through the same thing and it's just kind of the way business is done? Or, you know, have you been given the impression that it was the content of your ad that, that caused you to get the runaround you got? I will tell you that it is not standard business practice to repeatedly tell a prospective client that they will give you an answer over months and months and months and then never have them give you an answer. I, that, that to me is unheard of. But were you ever they, given we the... We were actually told we would be given an answer and we never were. Were you ever given the impression that Fox would approve the ad and run it if a spot opened up? We were consistently told that an answer would be coming very soon. 
Yeah, but um, so, but, my media buyer the entire time told me that she saw no reason why they would deny it, and okay. she was positive. She said that she gave me an 85% um, in her mind, 85% likelihood that we would be approved. I was more pessimistic just mm-hmm. by just by virtue of the fact that in October we did not receive a single response to a call or an email for almost the entire month of October from anyone but our Fox rep. No one internal to Fox itself ever answered us for that entire month. We're talking to Lyric Gillette. She's the founder and executive director of Faces of Choice. Her organization tried the Super Bowl and it didn't happen. They had the money and got the runaround and then we're finally told just recently that uh, sorry, uh, we're all booked up. No more ads to be sold. So um, you're getting some uh, publicity. Obviously, you're on the radio with me right now, but there's a petition out there now for people uh, to That's sign correct. about this. So Jason Yates of My Faith Votes has been absolutely incredible. Um, he organized in a matter of days a petition and an email drive. And so far, as of this morning, I'm sure there's a lot more now, Last count was 126,000 emails have been sent to Fox in a three or four day period. Wow. Um, this is untenable. This is this is censorship, and it, the problem is not that this organization, that Fox Sports, has the chutzpah to actually say we are rejecting your ad based on these terms. That's standard business practice. This is something, in my opinion, far more insidious. It's simply ignoring people into oblivion and marginalizing them. And so, uh, Jason Yates and My Faith Votes have done an incredible work with the petition. We are asking asking people if this issue is actually close to your heart and you care we're asking them that if you watch the super bowl to consider physically shutting off your television (laughs) and instead going to our youtube channel during the commercials and watching the stories of our survivors we don't just have the long commercial the two minute commercial and the 30 second super bowl commercial on our channel we the main meat of our channel are the actual stories of survivors we have melissa odin for instance of the abortion survivors network she survived a saline infusion abortion where for five days she nearly burned to death in a toxic salt solution. We have another survivor, Hope Hoffman, who survived a DNC abortion where part of her brain was actually scraped out from the front of her head to the back and she survived and was born. We have one story of survival after the other that these individuals are trying to tell. They're trying to get their voices out there after their life and their breath was almost stolen from them from the beginning of their lives. And we are not even giving them the dignity of having the opportunity and the platform to tell their stories of survival. We are we are highlighting survivors through movements like Me Too, one element after the other in our culture. Why are these individuals a lower bracket of humanity that they cannot tell their stories? Yeah, I was so just going to say, they, that, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Thank you. I would just ask that if you want to share their stories, if you actually care about their voices being heard, we have multiple ways to do that. You can go to Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Our handle for all three is at Face the Choice. Not Faces of Choice, but at Face the Choice. If you go to YouTube and you want to see their stories of survival, Hope Hoffman, Melissa Odin, Josiah Presley, um, go to YouTube and type in hashtag Face the Choice or hashtag Faces of Choice, and all of their videos will come. So consider shutting off the commercials during the, the, the Super Bowl and actually coming and watching these instead. Let Fox know that you're not pleased with this marginalization and censorship. Okay, I only have about a minute and a half left, uh, Lyric. Uh, how many babies survive attempted abortions every year? And I'm up against the hard break, so I, I want to make sure you know that I may bail quickly on you here. That's, that's totally fine. Um, it really does vary from state to state. There are different statistics that you can see on the Abortion Survivors Network website. That's one of our survivors' websites. However, a very um, conservative estimate that came out a few years ago was that 44,000 survivors of abortion are alive right now in the United States. Wow. And any way of knowing how many of the people, like the people in your ad, for example, how many of these people who survived, these babies who survived, were raised by their mothers, who the ones who tried to abort them? How many what? I'm sorry. You uh, how, many, how, how many of them are raised by their mothers? I have about 30 seconds left. We don't actually have statistics on that, but quite a few of the individuals who are on our channel were raised by family members or by their actual mother. Denisha Workizer was raised by her mother. So... Um, really incredible stories of forgiveness, hope, redemption, reconciliation. Hope Hoffman is now very good, uh, in very good relationship with her mother. Melissa Odin is in very close relationship with her mother. Many of the survivors, um, Imre Tiglasi reconciled with his mother before her passing. Um, so most, most of the survivors actually on our channel have good standing relationship with their families after this took place. Lyric, I'm out of time. Good luck with the uh, program. Good, good work you're doing and thanks. Thanks. 
With SRN News, I'm John Scott. It appears Republicans have the votes to acquit President Trump without calling new witnesses at his impeachment trial. Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski says she'll vote against calling new witnesses. Murkowski had been the last remaining Republican who offered Democrats any chance of extending the trial by crossing party lines. The Dow slumped more than 600 points today as a virus outbreak that originated in China continues to widen, stoking stock investors' worries about the potential global economic fallout. The broad sell-off erased the S&P 500's gains for January, which began with the market benchmark at a record high. American Airlines fell 3.2 percent after it suspended flights to and from China today. The Dow fell 603 points, the Nasdaq off 148, and the S&P dropped 58. This is SRN News. I am doing all the right things, drinking plenty of water, eating right, and exercising. But month after month, my constipation with belly pain, straining, and bloating keep coming back. Irritable bowel syndrome with constipation, or IBSC, affects 13 million Americans. Linzess, linaclotide, is a prescription medication that treats IBSC in adults. Linzess helps relieve belly pain and lets you have more frequent and complete bowel movements. Individual results may vary. Do not give to children less than 6, and it should not be given to children 6 to less than 18. It may harm them. Do not take Linzess if you have a bowel blockage. Get immediate help if you develop unusual or severe stomach pain, especially with bloody or black stools. The most common side effect is diarrhea, sometimes severe. If it's severe, stop taking Linzess and call your doctor right away. Other side effects include gas, stomach area pain, and swelling. Talk to your doctor and learn more at linzess.com. That's L-I-N-Z-E-S-S.com. Or call 1-800-LINZESS. Larry Elder sees a very biased impeachment process. 89% of Democrats want Trump out, even though zero Republicans supported an inquiry in the House and zero Republicans supported either of the two articles of impeachment. Can you say the most one-sided partisan impeachment in the history of this country? The Larry Elder Show, weeknights at 7 on AM 1250. The Answer. Choose E-Verify, the enhanced employment eligibility verification tool that can confidently confirm work eligibility. They've got a new look and the process has never been better. Check it out and get started at eVerify.gov slash go. Do you or your business have financial problems? Are you overwhelmed with debt? Then call me, Attorney Dennis Spire at 412-471-7675. My legal practice concentrates on bankruptcy law, debtor rights, and tax matters. I have over 30 years experience as a former United States Department of Justice bankruptcy attorney and lawyer in private practice. I have represented thousands of cases faced with financial problems and lawsuits. Reorganize and get a fresh start. Call 412-471-7675 or visit my website at DennisSpira.com. This is Jay Hagerman of Abernathy & Hagerman. Writing an estate plan is one thing. Having the experience to administer the estate is something else. At Abernathy and Hagerman, a state administration isn't a side job, it's what we do. You have the same goals we all do, to protect your assets, to minimize taxes, and ensure your inheritance gets to the ones that you love. How you get there, that's specific to you. So let's talk. Hagerman Law. Legal help that lasts a lifetime. Visit a-h.law. Email phishing attacks cost businesses billions annually in real cash, data loss, and brand damage. Phishing emails are hard to detect because the messages appear to be legitimate to unsuspecting employees. Introducing Barracuda Fish Line, a groundbreaking cloud-based solution designed to help employees recognize sophisticated email phishing attacks through interactive training reinforced by continuous simulation. Transform your employees from a liability into a line of defense. Go to barracuda.com slash pl to learn more. AM 1250 and FM 92.5, The Answer. WPGP Pittsburgh, a division of Salem Media Group. Listen on The Answer mobile app, smart speakers, tune in, iHeart, or radio.com. Stuck in traffic? We've got The Answer. Inbound on the Parkway West. From Airport Expressway to 60, 79 to the Fort Pitt Tunnel, really solid on the Parkway West. Outbound, that's also heavy. Bankville Road to Carnegie Parkway. East jams up outbound, Forbes Avenue to Edgewood, Swissdale. Inbound from Forest Hills to the Squirrel Hill Tunnel and heading to the Fort Pitt Bridge. Now on 79 northbound, still got that closure at 228. You're jammed up from the Parkway North. That's a look at traffic. I'm Jenny Robinson. 
1250, the answer. Weather. Rain early tonight, otherwise mostly cloudy, low tonight, 30. Tomorrow, cloudy with rain and snow showers in the afternoon, high 39. Rain or snow showers early tomorrow night, otherwise mostly cloudy, low 30. Sunday, flurries in the morning, then breezy and milder, high 46. With your AccuWeather forecast, I'm Brian May. The John Steigerwall Show, AM 1250, The Answer. Well, on Wednesday... the streets because they weren't asked to Institute. He's been on the show before, and he's back again. He's written a lot about this insanity. He joins us now. Thanks for being here, Raphael. Well, thanks so much for having me back. So how did the uh, new law in New York City make these six guys who are um, out there selling a drug that's killing thousands of people, uh, hundreds of people a day in the United States, uh, and, you know, how, how did this new law in New York make these guys ineligible for bail and before the law was enacted out of jail? Oh, I think so. Look, so before the law was enacted, the way things worked was that judges could consider a whole host of factors that might, uh, you know, lead to someone being a high flight risk, right? So in this kind of case, you've got six guys who were arrested for a pretty decent amount of weight um, who, are, who are looking at significant time if they're convicted. That alone, under the old system, probably would have induced a judge to require them to post a relatively high bail amount, which likely would have resulted in them, uh, you know, being incarcerated for some portion pre-trial um, until they could come up with the money, if they could come up with the money at all. Now, the new law takes off the table a whole host of offenses that judges can no longer consider bailing. Um, so basically, every nonviolent felony and even a couple of violent felonies are now offenses that are ineligible for bail and also ineligible for pretrial detention without bail, right? One of the other options that judges used to have um, was that if someone was particularly high risk in terms of their risk of flight, they could just say, well, you know, we don't trust that you'll come back even if we do have you post a high bail, so we're just going to remand you to pretrial detention, and that's where you'll be until your case, uh, you know, gets resolved and disposed of. Um, you know, basically what we've seen is just a huge limitation on judicial discretion, which, you know, is kind of part and parcel of the whole bail reform movement. What makes New York unique, though, is that New York took bail off the table for all these offenses, but it didn't do so in a way that other states have, which is by the other states that have kind of done bail reform in a more sort of reasonable and sensible manner. While taking all these offenses off the table, they also empowered judges to hold people who pose a high risk to public safety. And that's what New York did not do. So it's not just so much that New York took all these offenses off the table and made them ineligible for bail imposition, but it did that without also empowering judges to consider high-risk defendants um, and just to remand them because of that public safety risk, which is why you've seen so many people reoffending after they've been arrested and released. And that's already happening, right? I mean, people, this law has only been in effect for a little while, and there are already cases of people who didn't have to uh, post bail and have been rearrested, right? That's exactly right. So there have been lots of instances of people who have committed new crimes while they were out on release um, after arrests that took place either after January 1st when the law officially went into place or even before that. So a lot of judges uh, and prosecutors were basically operating um, as if the law was already in place in the last few weeks of December because it just didn't really make sense to sort of put the resources into pursuing uh, pretrial detention when that was only going to get reversed a few days later. Um, but yeah, so I mean, one of the one of the cases that you know really has garnered a lot of attention here in New York is is one. Um, of a young man named Jonathan Maldonado who was killed in a uh, drunk driving uh, accident by someone who was out uh, after a January 1st arrest for drug driving. And um, that person has a long history of, of convictions and arrests for this kind of offense. And, um, you know, clearly the new bail regime uh, has proven itself unable 
uh, to keep people like that from from you know putting the public at a significant risk of danger. Yeah, I saw that story. The guy had several uh, DUIs or DWIs, and um, I mean, I have no patience for that because I'm I'm uh, if I'm elected uh, governor. Uh, I would have in the state of Pennsylvania, if I was, put it this way, if I were made emperor, uh, the first offense for drunk driving would get you six months in jail. No, no, uh, no time off for good behavior. First offense. This guy had three, multiple offenses and right. they catch him again and they don't even ask him to post some bail. And this is, this is, how is this a, does this make the, how is this good for the people of New York? Well, it's not, right? And that's that's the problem. This law is the product of criminal justice reform advocates who really only have one party in mind, and that is the criminal class. I mean, you know, they genuinely and sincerely believe that, you know, uh, people who have been charged with crimes in the state of New York have gotten the short end of the stick. They believe that the system as it was constructed prior to this reform was, was oppressive in many ways. And they saw it as their mission to represent that oppressed party. What was left out of the equation, however, is, is you know, there any sense of justice for victims, which is why I think you're seeing such a backlash so quickly. I don't think um, that people truly expected this to play out the way that it has. And I think that's because a lot of the people who are, you know, just sort of regular folks, even folks on the left who just, you know, but still have a you know a clear sense of, of what constitutes justice. Just you know, really viscerally pull back um, from the idea that someone who is accused of such a heinous crime, but so much evidence before them, um, gets to just walk right out while the family is you know of the victim. In Maldonado's case, at least, is still grieving. So under the law, this new law, if if I get stopped, uh, get get arrested for DUI uh, for the second time, I go in to the police station and they just let me go and to give me a court date for I got to show up again right and if, and if I go out and do it the, obviously in this case where the kid got killed it, it was killed it's a little different but uh, it's a lot different but if 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 I if I already have two convictions for DUI and I get a third one do I still get to go uh, to leave without bail I don't have to go to jail that's right. Your your criminal history will not play a role in bail options. Um, so if it's 10 times, I still don't pay bail. That's right. These offenses, these so-called nonviolent uh, offenses, have been taken off the table completely, right? So judges have the, uh, the, the, the most restrictive option that in a, uh, judges have in a case like that is to impose some conditions on release. Um, one of the conditions that was actually already imposed on, on the perpetrator, in the, or the alleged perpetrator in the Maldonado case, was you know a, um, a breathalyzing uh, ignition lock on his on his car, um, and he was arrested on January first for tampering with that. Um, other conditions that they can impose are you know required check-ins with a with a probation officer. Um, or a community supervision officer, they can uh, require an electronic monitor to be worn. But every time that they impose those conditions, judges are now required to, on the record and or in writing, um, make a full case for why those conditions are the, quote, least restrictive means necessary to achieve their return to court. Well, Again, they cannot... They cannot take into consideration public safety risk at all in imposing these conditions. It is solely restricted to an assessment of flight risk. This is really, so, uh, really wonderful for the crime committing community, which I'm a you know uh, you always want to see them get a get a break. The crime. Oh committing yeah, I mean there have been multiple instances of defendants you know sort of pumping their fists in the, in victory as they walk out after their arraignment. Um, <laughs> You know, and, and this is particularly problematic because there is a, a significantly sizable body of research that shows that the deterrent effects um, on crime are strongest when um, we're considering the immediate consequences of that criminal behavior. Um, pretrial detention is probably one of the most immediate forms of those consequences that has the highest likelihood of deterring criminal acts. Um, and we've taken that off the table, and I do think that the criminal uh, community in New York and other places that have done similar things are going to start to internalize that that minimized risk. And um, any behavioral economist will tell you that 
if you lower the transaction cost to bad behavior, you simply get more of it. We're talking to Rafael Mangual. He's uh, Deputy Director of Legal Policy at the Manhattan Institute. Um, uh, so uh, is that the mayor, did this start with the mayor? I mean, he's an idiot. Everybody knows that, uh, de Blasio. But what, what, uh, who, who's responsible for this? So this is, this is a state law. So this was oh, passed state and, and New York. pushed okay. through. This is a state law passed and pushed through by, by Democrats after they won the majority. Well, on Cuomo's the last an idiot, election. too. So, yeah. And Cuomo, Cuomo signed this. They did this as part of the budget bill. So this was not an independent piece of legislation. This was, was jammed in through the budget process, this is, as well as some other criminal justice reforms. Now, to Cuomo's credit, he has signaled a willingness to pare this back and, and sort of reform the reform, um, so has has Stuart Cousins, the the, uh, the Senate uh, Majority Leader in New York. But uh, Carl Heasty, who I actually had a Twitter exchange with earlier this week, um, and is the Speaker of the New York State Assembly, seems to be holding his line pretty strong. Well, now I have a list here, uh, Raphael. The, that this is amazing to me. It's uh, you can hear I'm looking at it. It's about uh, so it's about three pages. I printed it out from the story I saw. These are um, uh, offenses that no longer require bail, and it's I mean it's a I don't know. It's got to be a couple hundred of them here. One of them that you no longer uh, here's one: killing a police dog or police horse. You don't need to, no bail. Yeah. So, uh, th- so we're not talking about jaywalking here. No, no, these are serious offenses. I mean, felony offenses, um, including vehicular manslaughter. These are not um, bailable offenses anymore. And, um, you know, again, if, if there is, I mean, you know, if we want to take the argument about bail reform seriously, I do think that we have to recognize that there is a real tension uh, between pretrial confinement and the presumption of innocence. And there's, there is surely a line um, in terms of length the pretrial detention where you that, that when you cross it you know sort of violates that presumption of innocence and violates due process um, but we're nowhere near that line and, and this law goes much further than was necessary to sort of preserve that presumption and uh, you know again there was a much smarter way to do this I, I, I pointed to New Jersey in some of my writing which which also did bail reform a few years back but in doing so, they empowered judges to consider the public safety risk posed by defendants and allowed, on a prosecutor's motion, a judge to require that defendant to spend their pretrial um, period behind bars when they pose a significant risk of reoffense. And New York really ought to do that. And it's a very simple fix that would uh, address a lot of the more immediate problems that I think we're seeing with, uh, with this legislation as it plays out. I'm looking at another one. Just uh, I can just you know run my finger down the list and stop, and they come up with a good one. How about this? You <laughs> you don't uh, you're not eligible for bail. You don't have to pay uh, a bond. You know you don't have to, you don't have to post bail if you've been arrested for bail jumping. So if right. mul- multiple <laughs> counts. So if you've jumped bail 37 times and they get you for the 38th time, they can't say, okay, that's enough. Your bail's a hundred thousand dollars and getting the, you know, you go in the can. That they can't do that. That's right. That's right. That's right. Again, um, you know what? What I think defenders of the reform will try to tell you is that well, there are a host of you know conditions on release that judges can impose, but none of those conditions are uh, ha- have any real incapacitative effect, right? I mean, they can't actually stop you from reoffending. You know, if you if you're not going to show up to court, you're surely not going to show up to a check-in. And there was one instance actually in Long Island last week where a judge refused to grant bail for a particularly uh, sort of egregious offender who, you know, was a career criminal, and uh, a higher judge overruled him in accordance with the laws he should have, um, and imposed a pretrial release condition of electronic monitoring within hours that defendant had cut off his ankle monitor and absconded. So uh, I don't think they found him yet. Um, so, you know, it, it, the, the whole pretrial release conditions argument really kind of falls flat um, to my mind because, it, again, it doesn't really have any real incapacitative effect. But the idea, though, here, and by the way, the Senate has rejected the motion to call witnesses 51 to 49. I think everybody saw that coming. Um, but um, it's a, a pe- poor, the poor uh, criminal is uh, at a disadvantage compared to the rich criminal because the rich criminal can can – or um, accused, uh, the rich accused can uh, cough up the money to get out, but the poor guy can't. But isn't that where the judge comes in? 
Yeah, well, this is, you know, this is the one sort of real, actually potent critique of the old bail system, right? It was this idea that you could have a rich but dangerous defendant secure their release while a poor but harmless defendant has to spend, you know, months behind bars as they await trial. And, but there are multiple ways that you can address that concern, and New York chose to do so, in my opinion, in a, a much more reckless way uh, than it should have, right? The way to address that problem is by empowering judges to hold defendants, irrespective of wealth, on the basis of the risk of the, that they pose to the public safety. New York affirmatively chose not to do that. There was a provision that would have allowed that in the original version of this legislation. Um, the criminal justice reform advocates uh, that were pushing this bill and that had control over its progress really lobbied hard against it. It was pulled at the last minute, and this is what we have now. Raphael, I'm out of time. I appreciate you being here. As usual, some really stupid stuff going on up there in New York. Thank you. Thank you. And hey, that's Rafael Manguel. Here's quickly, criminally negligent homicide, second-degree vehicular manslaughter, aggravated vehicular manslaughter, second-degree manslaughter, no bail for any of those. We'll be back. If you're an employer, a business owner, if you have 5 to 100 employees, listen up. The cost of doing business continues to skyrocket, strangling your HR department with more regulations, administrative duties, and liability than ever. I'm John Steigerwald. Your health plan's a big part of that cost. Another year, another 10% rate hike, another $1,000 increase on your deductible, another hospital or doctor you can't go to because they're not in the network. Isn't it time for a change? Well, stop the insanity and call Marley Financial, the most innovative agency in the industry. Put an end to the annual increase. Give your employees a national network that all hospitals accept and reduce your monthly premiums by 20 to 30%. It doesn't matter when your renewal is. Marley can help today. Call 724-884-1496. Marley Financial, 724-884-1496. 724-884-1496. I'm Andy Solomon. Rideshare platforms have evolved to provide riders with even better experiences. Sheriff John Wetzel, chairman of the National Sheriff's Association Traffic Safety Committee and former president of the International Association of Chiefs of Police, explains. Companies like Lyft are making rider safety a priority by continuously screening their drivers. Before getting into any car, riders should match the license plate, car model, and driver's name with what's shown in the app. During your ride, you can share your location and route with your family and friends. According to Wetzel, communities where Lyft is available have also seen lower rates of impaired driving and fatal crashes. For example, Miami-Dade Police announced that there was a 65% decline in impaired driving arrests in 2017 compared to the four prior years, thanks in part to ride sharing. Nationally, 71% of Lyft riders so they are less likely to drive while impaired because of the availability of ride sharing services. For more information, visit Lyft.com. If you're in HR, you're probably wearing a lot of hats. Recruiter, team builder, trainer, mediator, policymaker, and of course, paper pusher. But not anymore. Bamboo HR is the number one HR software for small and medium businesses. It manages all your employee data easily and automates countless tasks so you can focus on people, not paperwork. Bamboo HR frees you from spreadsheets so you can do your real job, creating a great place to work. If the data shuffle and paperwork mountain have you ready to hang up all your hats, you're ready for Bamboo. If you handle HR records and paperwork, Bamboo HR is a dream. Let us free up your time and put your days of pushing paperwork behind you so you can focus on the people and making your company a great place to work for everyone. Try PC Magazine's top pick for HR software free today. Just go to BambooHR.com slash HR. This is a limited offer. Only available to radio listeners at bamboohr.com slash HR. That's bamboohr.com slash HR. I am doing all the right things, drinking plenty of water, eating right, and exercising. But month after month, my constipation with belly pain, straining, and bloating keep coming back. Irritable bowel syndrome with constipation, or IBSC, affects 13 million Americans. Linzess, linaclotide, is a prescription medication that treats IBSC in adults. 
Linzess helps relieve belly pain and lets you have more frequent and complete bowel movements. Individual results may vary. Do not give to children less than 6, and it should not be given to children 6 to less than 18. It may harm them. Do not take Linzess if you have a bowel blockage. Get immediate help if you develop unusual or severe stomach pain, especially with bloody or black stools. The most common side effect is diarrhea, sometimes severe. If it's severe, stop taking Linzess and call your doctor right away. Other side effects include gas, stomach area pain, and swelling. Talk to your doctor and learn more at linzess.com. That's L I N Z E S S.com. Or call 1 800 Linzess. This is the John Steigerwald Show on AM 1250. The answer. So it's the Friday before the Super Bowl. We should talk a little bit about the Super Bowl. And if you let your kids watch the Super Bowl, or if you watch it, you are a very bad person. Uh, that's according to a writer at Time Magazine, a senior writer who covers sports. He wrote an op-ed, and he says it's a bad idea, parents letting their kids watch football. He says uh, the possibility of brain damage suffered by players should preclude kids from watching the sport. We had Merrill Hodge and his co-writer, um, Dr. Uh, Cummings. Peter Cummings on the, earlier this week talking about the hysteria over CTE and some uh, holes being punched in uh, Dr. O'Malo's uh, theories. This is what Sa Sean Gregory wrote about the 80s and 90s. Those were more innocent days. Back then, football fans were unaware of chronic traumatic encephalopathy and, and uh, you know what I mean, uh, CTE, the, the neurodegenerative disease associated with football brain trauma. And he also has other problems. This is what this idiot writes. It's getting ready for the Super Bowl. But should I be okay with his watching the game? Don't his eyeballs help support an enterprise that we know can damage its participants? This is on top of the laundry list of other reasons to, to tune out, like the stain of disturbing NFL domestic violence incidents or the apparent blacklisting of a player, Colin Kaepernick, for a peaceful act of protest on company time. He doesn't point that out because he's stupid. Uh, uh, or a sudden dearth of African-American head coaches, three now as opposed to seven in 2018, blah, blah, blah. Uh, then he says, he, says uh, he quotes a a uh, psychiatrist out there in California, and he's this, this uh, psychiatrist named Jim Taylor from the Bay Area, he says, you're gaining enjoyment from other people's suffering. There's no doubt about that. So as you get ready for the Sunday, I want you to understand that you should not watch the Super Bowl because you, you rotten person, you, are enjoying the suffering of other human beings. That's what the Super Bowl is about, and you should be ashamed. And if you let your kids watch the game on Sunday, you are a bad parent and a bad person. Shame on you. I'll talk to you on Monday. John Steigerwall Show is a production of AM 1250, The Answer, and Salem Media Group. Liberty Mutual Insurance Company helps you customize your home insurance so you only pay for what you need. Unlike things you paid for you didn't need, like the Vacnado 2000. A Wi-Fi connected vacuum that uploads Dust Bunny data to the cloud for real-time optimization. <laughs> Whatever that means. But really, it's just a very expensive doggy chew toy. With Liberty Mutual, get customized home insurance so you only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Only pay for what you need at LibertyMutual.com. Are you hiring? Do you know where to put...